Hello, I'm Jennifer Spencer with Spencer Properties, and I'm here today with our stager, Amber Cole, and she's here to talk with us a little bit about what, what sellers need to do to get their house ready for market. So thank you for being here. Thanks um, for having me. Well, let's start. First question that we get asked a lot by sellers is, I'm getting ready to put my house on the market, or I'm planning to put my house on the market in, in a few months, or even next year, or even in several years. What do I need to do to, what updates should I do to my house to get it ready to sell? That's kind of a broad question. It really depends on what it is um, that your house needs, whether it's maintenance, updates, paint, carpet. Um, there's any number of things. Everybody's house can stand to be decluttered. Everybody's house needs to be depersonalized, deep cleaned, um, pressure washed. There's certain things that kind of all sellers are gonna need to mm -hmm. do. Um, in addition, there are, based upon your price point, the market, um, location, there's so many other things that come into play as to what you will need to do to get your house up to par because we all want the same thing. We want it to sell for top dollar. We want it to sell as fast as possible. So in doing so, it depends on um, are we going to need to paint to freshen it? Are we going to need to put some new carpet in? Are we going to need to update the kitchen a little bit? Any number of things that we may need to do okay. to get it market ready. Also depends on time frame. If you're going, you know, I've had clients who are a couple years out and they say, I want to update my, my kitchen and enjoy it for a little while, and which I recommend. I love that idea. Right. You know, it's a great idea if you're going to have to put some money into your home to get to enjoy it for a little bit. Right. So we've done some kitchens where we sprayed out cabinets and um, added some new granite, new quartz, things like that, so that they get to enjoy it before it was in the Well, that's what we did here. Um, this is my kitchen, and Amber came and helped me make the decisions because when all my children are grown, I'm planning to sell the house in a few years, and I asked her, what should I do now that I can enjoy that will also um, bring the most value? So the things that you told me, and I think I've heard you tell a lot of other sellers, are things, like you mentioned, paint, that's because that's not very expensive, and that has no, a big impact. huge impact. Um, carpeting, new carpet. Yes. In this case, I have hardwood floors. You recommended that we refinish the hardwood floors. Yes. Um, and they were Bruce hardwoods, and we were still able to refinish them, and they look like uh, site laid hardwoods that. now. And you recommended uh, putting in countertops, new mm -hmm. countertops, because I had brown and gold countertops in here, so that was a good recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, New appliances, because I had black appliances. You said the stainless steel would be a good thing to do for an investment. Yes. So, and, and I do know, you know, it, it does matter which price point we're talking about. In a $100,000 or a $200,000 house, the updates are going to be different, obviously, than they would be in a $500 or $700,000 house, because that changes. But no matter what the price point, buyers want a house to be move-in ready and updated. Absolutely. So if you had to say the top three things that would have the most impact, what would you say they are? Declutter. Mm -hmm. Can I give more than three? <laughs> sure. Declutter, uh -huh. paint, flooring, curb appeal. Okay. Depersonalize. Declutter, okay. depersonalize, paint, curb appeal. Curb appeal and flooring. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think all of those have huge impacts. So. Now, also sellers want to know which repairs should I make? When I walk through the house, I see things that need to be done. How do I prioritize that? What's your recommendation there? Um, we don't want anything that looks like deferred maintenance. Uh, buyers start to wonder if you're not willing to fix something that they can see, then what can't they see that you weren't mm -hmm. willing to fix? Mm -hmm. So any cracks and ceilings, water damage, absolutely always find the water damage, mm -hmm. find the source, mm -hmm. repair, and then paint the ceiling. Um, mm -hmm. You know, things like that I, I see quite a bit. Um, so anything mostly that, anything that's loose, um, mm -hmm. railings that are mm -hmm. loose, things like that, um, are the big things. Yeah, wood rot around wood the Wood rot, yes. Trim, wood rot on the outside, siding. absolutely. Okay, okay. And of course, another thing sellers always ask is, okay, you've told me I need to fix these things, you've told me I need to update these things. Do you have the contractors, or who do I call? So. Yes. Well, I always recommend, I have contractors that I recommend. I always recommend to my sellers to get more, more than one estimate. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly there are people that I work with that I recommend that um, I can call at a moment's notice and they get out there and if seller, I mean, things happen, they aren't, they want
wanted to come back and fix something, whatever that is, they'll jump at it and go mm -hmm. fix it. So yeah, I have people that I recommend. Right. Okay. Now, some houses we walk into are show places. They're ready to go on the market the first time we walk in. That's very rare, but it does happen. Some houses we walk in are major renovation projects, but most houses that, that we list and that you stage um, are kind of fall in the middle where they need some updates, they need some um, preparations and staging. Um, when, we, when we talk about the typical house, how long does it take to get it ready for market? From the time that they meet with you, have their first staging appointment, to when you come back with the photographer to do the pictures, what length of time is that? It really, a lot of it depends on how motivated the seller is. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're ready to go and they spend that first weekend packing up, um, cleaning up, getting ready, to go ahead and call contractors out, get on their schedule as, just as fast as possible. So it really depends on their motivation right. as to how quickly things can be done. Um, if we're having to do some of the, the larger renovations, um, we could be looking at maybe four to six weeks mm -hmm. based upon if we have to order countertops mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Um, and I always am a part of that process. I don't want them to have to make decisions and feel overwhelmed by it. Right. My goal is to make it as easy as possible for them. It's very overwhelming to sell your home. Right. And I want to make that as smooth of a transition as possible. That I've offered to them numerous times, call me, send me pictures, text mm -hmm. me. You know, if you're, don't panic, first call me and we'll talk it through and we'll pick out the right stuff and I'll right. work with the contractors, I'll work with the granite people um, and figure out what the best thing is for your mm -hmm. home to get it sell. Mm -hmm. You really do make the process easy. I mean, she, Amber will come in and she will walk through your home, she will give you, leave there and she will give you a list of exactly what you need to do. So you'll get that email to you after the appointment. Um, once you go through, as you're going through the list, there's some things that we do ourselves, like put away the pictures of our family and things like that. Um, put away all signs of pets, but then there's other things that are more advanced that I needed to call Amber about. And, you know, I would pick out a light fixture at the store and I'd send her a picture and say, what do you think? And she was always available right then, which was great, res very responsive, very communicative, so I could get answers to those questions while I was seeing it in the store or while I was in my house in the middle of a project. Um, so I do think you make it easy. You make it easy and you make it fun. That's what I try to. <laughs> you make it fun because you get excited about everything. So it is fun. I mean, I love doing it. It's a, it's nice to see the finished product. It's like nice to see when somebody's done the work and um, they're excited. And we have a, a client right now that you sent me to, and um, he called me last week just asking some random questions, and we spoke, and he was like, "I just want you to know this is your house. You've done this, <laughs> right? So right. it's sold in two days." Aww. So I'm excited about that. You know, I'm excited for him that he did the work, he put in the effort and the time, and it sold really fast. Well, we so see that. Great. When people do what Amber says, the house sells that fast for top dollar. I mean, you really, you do, you have a gift. You know what you're doing. You know Thank what you're you. talking about. Thank you. Okay. So um, next thing is, um, if people are trying to get an idea of what it will cost to get their house ready for market, and I know that's a broad question, but can you give give them some um, some idea of what they can expect to pay? Well, it really is. Again, it depends on their you know what they need to do. It also depends on what they can do themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, plenty of people know how to paint. Um, right. Whether or not they want to spend the time on it, whether mm -hmm. or not they want to have the ability and the skill to do it. Um, so it really just depends on um, what they're going to have to hire out. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it can be as low as a couple hundred dollars just mm -hmm. trying to get it ready, maybe repair some wood rod, fix some crown molding, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, or it could be, you know, 8000 mm -hmm. based on if we need to do paint and carpet and update for you to get top dollar. Mm -hmm. And for a self pickling, it doesn't always mean that you're going to get um, a certain dollar amount on your return on, or other on your investment. It often will just sell your house faster so mm -hmm. you're not sitting with it. Mm -hmm. um, the longer it sits, less money you're going to make, you're mm -hmm. going to lose money in your offer, you know, so it's really a matter of um, we want it to look its best from the very beginning. As soon as those first pictures hit the market, we want buyers to be chomping at the bit to get your home. You're mm -hmm. going to sell faster, you're going to get more money for your home, and all of that is based upon how much work you put into it from the very beginning mm -hmm. and selling in two days. Yeah. Well, I think you're absolutely right. When, you know, any investment that we're recommending, we're looking for it to either sell the house faster, um, which means less aggravation, less hassle, or 
increase the sale price. And mm -hmm. when, you know, the way, when we went back and analyzed the, the money we spent on houses and what it did to the value, we saw typically if you do spend $8,000, we are looking at maybe $25,000 more in sale price, um, typically. So we want to see that kind of good return on investment. I think, I think mm -hmm. you really have a good, uh, have your finger on the pulse of where we're going to get the best, the best bang for our buck. Yeah, and I never want someone to put money into their home that, they're, that they don't need to. Right. You know, if you're in a certain market, hot area, your location's amazing, um, I don't want you to have to do more than you need to. Right. I still want you to depersonalize, I still want you to declutter, I want it to be deep cleaned before it goes on the market. There are certain mm -hmm. things that are always need to do, but I certainly don't want them to put money in that they don't have to. I only recommend things that I know, based on the market, based on buyers, right. and based on talking to buyers' agents, what's going to sell them. And you do know. You know what buyers are looking for. That's very clear. So, um, Next question I have is, a lot of times sellers will ask us, is it better for me, better for me or my family to, for us to move out before we put the house on the market, or is it better to put the house on the market while we're still living here? What's your recommendation there? It depends on the family. You know, if you have five kids and four dogs, um, right. yes, mo more often than not, it is fine to move out. Right. Um, however, if you move out, any kind of flaws in the house become very glaring. Mm -hmm. So if you move out, you need to make sure you did the paint and the carpet mm -hmm. and those things because as you start to move that furniture out, the walls aren't going to look as great. Mm -hmm. And it's going to just be more obvious, those things. Um, Certainly, you know, having furniture in the house is nice. It makes it feel homey, comfortable. It can sometimes make rooms look larger. Sometimes it can make rooms look smaller right. based on the size of the furniture. Mm -hmm. So based upon what you own and what you have in the home, um, then it, it can be better to sometimes mm -hmm. move out. Mm -hmm. so, so it sounds like depending on how your house shows and, and the, you know, what your family demographics are, yeah. <laughs> you know, the number of kids, number of pets, ages of the kids, Whatever your situation may sure. determine which way is the better way to go. But if the house is vacant and there's no furniture in it, you're saying it really needs to be in pristine condition. Yes. Okay. So a lot of people worry about that. They they don't want to you know move out and leave leave the house empty with no furniture. They've watched HG, HGTV and they say, mm -hmm. I need furniture. Um, do you think they really need furniture? I mean, is it what what is your what's your thought on that? Um, I think that it can help. Um, with things like if you have floors that you're not going to refinish that um, or that are kind of a dated color, um, sometimes the furniture can help, rugs can help a right. little bit to, right. to kind of mask that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So again, it really depends on that house um, whether or not we need furniture. Mm -hmm. If you have large furniture, um, big arms, overdone furniture, and lots of it, it is oftentimes better to move it out. Right. Otherwise, the rooms just feel small, mm -hmm. and it's not doing you any favors to show mm -hmm. off a small room. Right. Okay. So when there's no furniture there, sometimes um, negative things like dated colors can really be the focal point. Yes. Whereas when the room's furnished, that might just be a part of the room, but yes. not the focal point. Yes. So that's Helps to mask it a little bit. Right. So that's all a part of the evaluation yes. on whether to furnish or not. Yes. All right. Um, next question is: um, A lot of sellers have said, "I'm really concerned about you know, the ones that do decide to stay in their, their homes." Say, "I'm really concerned about how do I keep my house show ready when I've got when I'm living here, when I've got children and animals and maybe parents living with them or whatever their situation might be." or just spouses who are messy, you know, <laughs> whatever it might be. What is your advice on how to keep, how to live in a home and keep it show ready? The biggest thing is, if you're not using it, pack it up. Mm -hmm. Do it even before we start showing. Okay. If you're not using it, you're not in the closets, if you have extra toys that your kids aren't playing with, go ahead and pack it up. It just will make it easier for you to move things out. Um, I always recommend, I always recommend putting out fresh towels for showings, things like that. Um, you know, don't use them. Mm -hmm. Nobody can touch them. And go around with a shopping bag with the new towels in it, throw the old ones in, new ones out pretty, throw that in your car. Um, have a, you know, a lot of times laundry baskets. Mm -hmm. Toss some stuff in there. You want to clear off your counters. You want to make sure your floors are vacuumed. Um, but mainly just kind of 
clearing out what you are not mm -hmm. using and what you can live without mm -hmm. in the beginning will help you through that process so right. much. Okay. So the less that you have, mm -hmm. the less you have in your house, the less you have to keep clean. And it's developing habits. You mm -hmm. know, like one of the things I recommend for showers is buying a little caddy, put your stuff in mm -hmm. the caddy, become in the habit. When you get out of the shower, you put it underneath the, the bathroom mm -hmm. sink and pull it in and out. Right. So okay. that it's not messing up your room. Right. right. Okay. Um, what about pets? I think that's another question we hear a lot is, what do I do with my, with my cats? What do I do with the dogs? What do I do with my pets um, while mouse is on the market? So ideally we don't want pets in the homes. We don't want pets. We don't want signs of pets. Um, buyers can be really funny about other people's pets. And even if your house doesn't smell like dog, smell like cat, can't smell the litter box, if they see the dog toys and they see the cat tree climbing toy, mm -hmm. um, all the house suddenly the house is going to smell like mm -hmm. like animal, even though it didn't. They're going right. to think it does. Right. So ideally, um, I recommend really pare down on those on those toys mm -hmm. and the things that you use for your cat and take them with you. Mm -hmm. If possible, have a friend come, let them out, take them out mm -hmm. for a walk when you're showing things like that. Right. And again, if you've done all this stuff, hopefully we're going to sell really fast and it'll be quick and you don't have to do it without them. Well, it, it is hard to figure out what to do with pets, but we have a lot of different ideas and resources on that. We do have dog walkers who can come and cat sitters who can come and take the pets out while you're out. They can go to doggy daycare. They can go stay with family members. Um, they can just jump in the car with the rest of the family and go on an errand when, they, when you have a showing. There's a lot of different ways to, to deal with with the pets, but um, I agree with you completely that they do need to, to go out during the, you know, they need to be out of the house during the showings. So. Yeah. Um, okay, next question is, um, how many showings will I have before my house sells and how long will that take? So again, that goes back to how well did you prepare your home? Mm -hmm. um, did you do the work in the beginning? Uh, oftentimes I've had in the last month a couple of sellers that didn't do the work in the beginning their house sat and then they're like oh amber we need to talk about now i'm going to go back and do the work right and it it's upsetting because i just i want them to have done it early on and they wouldn't be in this position and you know so um, and then when they do the work the house sells, it sells. It sells. every time yeah. every time yeah. and i just i feel bad for them i understand that they didn't want to do the work in the beginning but it's so much better for them in the yeah. long run um because another house has been sitting on the market for months. Right. So, ideally, um, you want it to be show ready from the first step. Have those photos look amazing. Um, declutter, depersonalize, clean it. Um, deferred maintenance, fresh, fresh and look, um, current. And then, you know, it hopefully won't take that long to right. sell it. I think the average is 20 to 30 showings mm -hmm. um, for it to sell, mm -hmm. but certainly that's not our goal. We want it done sooner. Right. So we need to put out, put the best foot forward from the very beginning, sell it fast. Yeah. Well, and I will tell you, there are companies now um, that have come out that say, we'll buy your house. You don't need to do anything. Um, we will buy it uh, in the condition it's in. I mean, you have to pay for the repairs, but they don't do that until after they, they don't make the repairs after you've moved out and closed on the house. Um, and that is a really great, I mean, it's a great, brilliant concept because you don't have to meet with Amber. You don't have to prepare your house for market. But the flip side of it is they're going to offer you 7% below market. So 7% of a few hundred thousand dollars is a big, big loss. Um, and, you know, I just feel like if you have someone like Amber who will come in and hold your hand, walk you through the process, handle the contractors, um, make it just really easy for you, then you don't have to give up that equity in your home. I mean, that's that's a that's a big loss. So um, so it is it is a, a, a job, but um, but it's worth it. You get such a good return on it. I think you do, and 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 I it's an investment certainly when you first look at it and you look at I've got to put this money in to sell my home. However, and I always discuss this with my sellers, um, when a buyer walks into your home. From the second that they hit that door, they're making that home theirs. That all has value to them, monetary value. Mm -hmm. And that is going to cost you one way or another. They don't know the true cost of that you can spray your cabinets out for $2,000 mm -hmm. or less. They don't know that we can put carpet in your house for a couple thousand dollars. They're going to look at it and say, $8,000 to do carpet and I've got to get this kid.
kitchen, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And so they look at it so much more than the reality and you're gonna lose it on the offer end and you could have just done it at the beginning, it right. was sell faster and you didn't even invest that much money to do it. Right, right, I agree with you. So we value what you do. You've done such a phenomenal job with um, getting our sellers homes ready for market, making the process enjoyable and, and as stress-free as possible. So. Um, I appreciate you answering these questions today. I think that these are questions that we hear a lot and that sellers are interested in, in knowing about. So thank, thank you for you. having me.